Amen. God bless you. I'm glad you're back in church on a Sunday night. I'm going to ask our ushers to come, please. If you're visiting tonight for the first time or the first time in a long time, if you'll be kind enough to be seated, please. All of our guests, please be seated. And thank you so much for coming. Again, uh, our ushers are going to come. They're going to give you a visitor's card. And if you could take that visitor's card and uh, fill it out, please, and place it in the offering plate as it does go by. We would appreciate that so very, very much. Thank you for praying today. My great number of attendants that was here. And of course, you would expect nothing different on, on a Veterans Sunday. And then 26 people on the campus walking the aisle receiving Christ. And two people found the Lord in baptism. It was really neat to watch the young people today to be able to display the colors. And they did a good job. Now, now when they were heading down that aisle and they hit that balcony... Uh, you know, I, I thought for sure it was going to kind of like, ooh, you know, but they, they just stayed right in step. They just stayed right in step, and they did a great job, and we appreciate them uh, coming from the Vancouver High School, and so what a blessing that is. Please be seated, if you will, and I'm going to get two of our uh, men here on the platform to help me with this. Uh, if uh, you were serving in another capacity this morning or you were not able to attend, uh, we gave a gift out honoring our veterans. And so if you are not able to receive the gift, but you would like to be able to receive the gift, if you'll simply raise your hand, these two gentlemen are going to come off the platform. They're going to give you that right now. And so if you are serving in another capacity on, on property or uh, you are not able to be here at all, just raise your hand, please, and uh, we'll make sure that you'll get one of these. Every year we give out a gift, and uh, the gift, of course, is just to say we appreciate you uh, so much for your service and for your loyalty to our country and for serving with great honor. And we appreciate you from the bottom of our hearts. It's because of you that we still have the land of the free and the home of the brave. And so we just appreciate you so very, very much and all that you've done uh, to be able to keep our land exactly that. And so thank you so much for doing that. Uh, we have a couple of these things, and this is to uh, my wife and I, and so if you could deliver these back to my dear wife, Mrs. Wells, please. And uh, this is happy 15th birthday, and uh, this is from uh, mom and dad, and this is to Liza. So where's Liza at? Where's she at? Raise your hand. Right over there. All right, there we go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday. God bless you. And uh, today's your birthday. Is it today? Tomorrow. Give her a big hand of applause. That is super... God bless you. That is so great. All right, Sarah McDowell, raise your hand, please. Uh, happy birthday. Let me see what this one says here. Happy birthday to the best wife ever. And that is great. And that is from, uh, no, this is to Sarah McDowell. Okay, there you go. There you go. Did I say that wrong? From, from Sarah McDowell. Oh, okay. All right. Yeah. Okay, I got you. Okay. <laughs> Brother Ahe, raise your hand. Brother Ahe and your family, raise your hand there. That is good. Any more? I don't think so. I think that's it. Good. Hey, let me read you a couple of things, if I may. Uh, of course, the Veterans Meal, thank you so much for volunteering the food, uh, for bringing it, and for those that were a part of the staff uh, was able to come over and to make them feel welcome and to be able to fellowship. And we appreciate you so very, very much. All those that had a part in doing that, that was absolutely fantastic. We run C uh, Ministries on Saturday and in our C Bible Clubs, 52 in attendance and seven receiving Christ. Chapel on Wheels is to the district in downtown Dallas to be able to reach those that are homeless. They had 10 in attendance there. We thank the Lord for that. Our church plant in South Dallas, 37 in attendance today and four people receiving Christ as Savior. And then uh, Brother Jeff Walters, I announce this, of course, every service uh, for you to pray for them. And so Brother Jeff Walters and Denton Bell in Nigeria right now, they're finishing up the week. And then, of course, Hannah and the children, Hannah Bell and her children, leave to be able to join Denton over in Africa. So you pray for them. They'll be pulling out on Thursday. They're excited uh, to be able to get in that 
comfortable, long airplane ride. And so you pray for them. Uh, pray for Denton. Denton is down sick, and he is not doing well. So you please pray for him, if you will, that he'll feel better. Uh, I've been reaching out to him and Brother Walters, and I was concerned because Denton normally just texts me back right away, and I'm not hurting anything from him. And so I knew something was up, so I asked Hannah, is he okay? And he is sick, and so please pray for him. Uh, Brother Walters did text back and say that uh, he's been able to do several Bible clubs in the vill village of Abuja, and also uh, being able to preach in the, the Grace and Glory Baptist Church in Abuja, also the New Mana Baptist Church uh, there in the Abuja area, and so far he's had the privilege to lead 142 people to Christ. And so a good report on that, and we thank the Lord for that. I pray for Mrs. Lin Yao. Uh, she turned this in. By the way, if you would like for us to be able to mention stuff prayer requests wise please text mrs cavanaugh she's in charge of the announcements and otherwise it may not get to where you want it to be uh, but she knows how to be able to get that in various areas of announcing and so but please pray for mrs lynn yao having eye surgery tomorrow and i know that uh, she would appreciate that so very very much don't miss wednesday night Wednesday night at 7 o'clock, we have the Personal Growth Series. Uh, Dr. Bachman is teaching on organizing your personal world. Of course, uh, Brother Butler teaching on balancing your family life. And then Brother Palmore teaching on improving your personal finances. Uh, I have a piece of paper back there, ushers, if you'll help me. And I'm going to give you some otherwise instructions for if you'd like to do something different than the paper I'm handing out. Of course, today was uh, change the clock, set the clock back. Hopefully Tuesday we'll be uh, turning the country back uh, to where it's more conservative and more pleasing to God. This kind of gives you some instructions about the different ones that's running for office. And uh, I, I cannot uh, on my platform say, okay, you need to vote definitely this way. So we just give you information and if you'll read it, you'll be guided as to what to do in your personal voting for Christian values. And so if you do not receive one of these, if you'll simply raise your hand, please. And uh, this would be for voting age only. Uh, we don't want paper airplanes in the auditorium. And so if you could be able to receive one of these, that would be great uh, to be able to do that. Brother Bachman found a website. He shared it with me, and I asked that he would turn it in through Mrs. Cavanaugh for an announcement. Uh, this is really neat. I even got on it this afternoon, kind of played around with it uh, to look at it even more. But I used it when I went to vote uh, as an early voter out in the Terrell District. And, and you can find this. You can find it, of course, uh, on the Internet. It's called I Voter, uh, the, the letter I and then voter guide, voter guide, all together, ivoterguide.com, and, uh, and you'll be able to go on there, and you'll be able to receive information as to the candidates that's running for various offices and various positions that's in your, not just in the state of Texas, and, but also in your specific location. And so please be mindful about that, if you will. Then part in our mess, we're out there uh, working uh, diligently. Brother Josh uh, Wells is heading up uh, the project, and uh, him, and I know that Brother Brad came up, Brother Brad Etheridge, and, and uh, I, I saw Kyle out there, and and they have now tore apart all the bathroom facilities over here, and it is ready now for those to come in and do the work. We're hiring it out professionally to be able to be done, but now it's all gutted out, ready to go, both of them. That's why you see the tape. Uh, even the little kids figure it out, right? They say, ooh, ooh. They look at the tape, you know, the big blue X's on the door. They go, ooh, don't go in there. That's pretty good. That's pretty good. That's from a two-year-old, three-year-old, four-year-old, okay? And so, like I said this morning, if they figured that out, then adults, uh, uh, please follow, okay? But uh, pardon the mess that's over there. Invitation tracks are out there in the lobby. Uh, if you would like to invite many friends to come to I Heard the Bells, that's the Christmas musical. We would like for them to come as well. It's going to be on Saturday and Sunday. That is December the 10th and the 11th at 6 p.m., so please be mindful about that. You know, uh, I appreciate Miss Denise being in our school, and in just a little bit, I'm going to have them to come, not now, but because I want our choir to come down to be able to see 
of what they have done. They invited me, the fourth and sixth grade class invited me to come down. Of course, uh, Ms. Denise being the head teacher of that class and said, I'd like for you to come down and watch the kids as they say, the Declaration of Independence, uh, as far as being able to quote it. And, and, and they did, uh, the presentation was outstanding. I'm talking about just superb. And so tonight, in a little bit, I'm going to have them to come, and they're going to recite that to you tonight. And I think that you'll be shocked. Uh, I hope that some of our congressmen are watching, and, uh, and that way uh, they can be able to see uh, how it is for a young person to understand it and to be able to uh, endorse it and be well pleased with it, and uh, what an honor it is for them to be able to do that in just a little bit. I'm going to come back. We have a presentation to make in a little bit. I'll have them to do theirs in just a little bit, but let's do this. If you brought a guest, you'd like to introduce your guest, would you stand, please? You brought a guest. You like to be able to introduce your guest, okay? All right, there you go. Okay, right here. I have a, I have a group of my best kids from the best, but uh, this is Mr. Eric. It's his first time in my group. Good. Good. God bless you. God bless you all for coming. Glad you're here. Good. Anybody else have a guest you want to introduce tonight? All right. Let's give all of our guests a big round of applause, if you would. Please stand once again as we sing page number 329, The Cleansing Wave. We'll sing... The first and the last verse, page number 329.
right, if you're visiting tonight, be sure to turn that visitor's card in by way of the offering plate going by. Dr. Botman's going to come and lead us as we pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for another great week with a lot of folks being saved, even throughout the week, through the different ministries of our church, as well as our own people reaching out and talking to folks and handing out tracts. And then certainly all across the world because of the partners that we have as our missionaries that uh, are in other places and other countries doing the same thing that we're doing here. God, heaven's going to be a wonderful time when we get together and get to see all the folks that our ties, our offerings, our missions giving help to uh, influence and many folks are being saved as a result of it. Certainly be with those that we prayed for earlier in the service that are overseas right now and that God give them good health and uh, give them expediency as they try to get the gospel to a lot of folks. Help us continue to be faithful here. And God, I pray that you help us to be faithful in our tithes and offerings so that we can do even greater things for you in the days that we have left before you return. Be the service tonight. Bless us. Speak to our hearts, we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
right, just a couple of announcements. Uh, don't forget Tuesday, as Preacher mentioned, is Election Day, so be sure to get out and vote. There still will be adult soul winning a meeting at 7 o'clock in the Senior Saints classroom. Uh, Wednesday night at 6 p.m. is our Calm Ministry, which is a grief support ministry. Uh, meets in the Senior Saints classroom. And then 7 o'clock, Patch Club and Bible Study Split Sessions will happen on uh, Wednesday night. This coming Friday and Saturday is the Couples Retreat, so if you registered, uh, please be sure to stop by Guest Services, pick up the, your information packet uh, tonight and that way you'll have the information that you need for this coming weekend and then Saturday there will still be bus workers meeting at 9 30 10 o'clock churchwide soul winning meeting uh, and that'll be right here in the auditorium uh, coming events Saturday November 19th so that's not this coming Saturday but the following Saturday uh, acts of caring ministry will meet and that'll be at 2 o'clock and then there'll be a cantata practice here in the auditorium from 4 p.m. to 6 p.m. There's a couple of different things. We always try to do a ladies' volleyball game and men's basketball game just for the fun of it. And so Sunday, November 20th, will be a ladies' volleyball game. That'll be after the p.m. service. That'll be for college age and up. And then uh, the men, of course, will be the following Sunday, men's basketball game after the evening service. That'll be also college age and up. So two weeks in a row there on either side of Thanksgiving uh, week for uh, sports. Uh, Monday through Friday, November 21st through the 25th, is Parkside Baptist Academy and Lone Star Baptist College Thanksgiving breaks. That middle of that week, that Wednesday, November 23rd, there'll be an FAR, Far Above Ruby's Bake Sale, after the Bible study to be able to uh, raise funds for that particular program. And so make sure you put some money aside for that and come support the girls. All right, very good. Don't forget to sign up, if you will, for the ladies or for the men's uh, activity that he talked about, the basketball, volleyball. Also, there's a brochure out there that can help you to know what to do, and that is super. Let's pray, and Mindy's going to sing. Father, bless, I do pray. Thank you for tonight. Uh, bless everything that's said, everything that's done. Bless the special music, and then, uh, Lord, uh, the young people as they give the presentation tonight of the Declaration of Independence. And then as we continue in the service, and we'll thank you for that. In Jesus' name, amen. None can heal the sick, nor touch the blind like Jesus. None can comfort or give peace of mind like Jesus. None can solace the weary soul, nor save the lost and make them whole like Jesus, Jesus. None can forgive your sins of darkest night like Jesus. None can turn them into purest white like Jesus. None can banish Satan's power, the one who seeks to devour like Jesus.
Ms. Denise joined us as a part of our faculty uh, at uh, Parkside Baptist Academy, has done a great job with our students and moved here to serve the Lord through the ministries of Parkside Baptist Church. And, and uh, she has just been hands-on all the way. Uh, great smile, great personality, loves the Lord, serves in her Spanish department, getting married soon. And uh, we're so proud of her. But the other day, uh, Brother uh, Butler came by my office and said, you know, they have been working on something very special, and that is to recite the Declaration of Independence. And uh, they would love for us to be able to go down and hear them do that, and we did. And I was just so impressed. Before I left the classroom, I asked her, would it be possible if the children could do that on Sunday night? Uh, on this special day, I thought it would be uh, very appropriate, and uh, they did a good job. They'll do a good job again, and so listen to them very carefully tonight. When in the course of human events, it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political barriers which have connected them with another, and to assume among the powers of the earth the separate and equal station to which the laws of nature and of nature's God entitle them. A decent respect to the opinions of mankind requires that they should declare the causes which are called to the separation. We hold these truths to be self-evident, that all men are created equal that they are not rather created with certain unalienable rights, that among these are life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And to secure these rights, governments are instituted among men, deriving the just powers and the consent of the government. That whenever any form of government becomes a truck of the end, it is the right of people to alter or to abolish it, and to institute a new government, laying its foundation of such principles and organizing these powers in such forms as to them shall seem most likely to affect their safety and happiness. Prudence, indeed, will dictate that governments long established should not be changed by light and transient causes, and accordingly all experience has shown that mankind are more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable, and to right themselves by abolishing the forms to which they are accustomed. But when a long chain of views and usurpation Pursuing merely the same object, the events are designed to reduce them under absolute despotism. It is their right, it is their duty to throw off such government and to provide new laws for the future security. The Declaration of Independence in Congress, July 4th, 1776. Isn't that phenomenal? That is phenomenal. That is absolutely great. I'm going to ask, of course, uh, Brother and Mrs. Mason to make their way to the platform. We have a presentation for them tonight, and uh, this presentation reads this. It's called the Faithful Servants Award. We're doing one a month, and of course, it's to Brother and Mrs. Mason in recognition of their dedicated service as an example of servants of the Lord. We thank you for your sacrifice and for your heart for people. And uh, they have done an outstanding job. As they're coming tonight, I'd like to read you just a little bit about them. Uh, they both uh, were saved on March, the 20, uh, March 27, 1986, on Thursday night soul-winning visitation. Brother and Mrs. Uh, S uh, Dowdy Sr. led them to the Lord. And then uh, that next Sunday, they came to church riding a bus and followed the Lord in scriptural believers' baptism. Uh, not long after that, they started to get involved in the Parkside Baptist Church Ministries. Brother Mason, uh, of course, and Mrs. Mason helping. He was a bus captain for 16 years, and she was his faithful secretary. And then uh, being those that would teach in our Sunday school staff, teaching ninth, uh, excuse me, nine through 11 year olds uh, in uh, different uh, church facilities that we had, even the last facilities over on Oates Drive. Mrs. Mason also has served in the nursery, being faithful serving in the nursery. Yeah, that's a hero. That's the nursery director, by the way. 
for 36 years, every Sunday night, she has been in the nursery. Uh, she also has sung in the choir for over 30 years. Now, I know she doesn't look that old, but this is what uh, has been shown. Uh, she has served in Far Above Rudy, Ruby's for uh, 24 years, been a name taker at the altar many times and for many years, has taught uh, in our academy. She taught kindergarten and first grade in the academy. Now, Brother Mason has been our sound man, working the sound board for 36 years years you know what he dreams about at night he dreams that he hears things and he moves his arms are moving all night long as he's adjusting the soundboard uh, he even takes off work this has been something that has been so miraculous about him every conference that we've ever had since I have been pastor and under the administration of Dr. May as well he would take off work without pay and come and work those conferences now, I'm talking a missions conference, he's here. I'm talking Baptist leadership conference, he's here. I'm talking the teen conference, he's here. And then helping to be able to set up everything for the ladies conference, absolutely phenomenal. And uh, they have done a great job in serving Christ here all these many years, faithful as can be through the ministries of Parkside Baptist Church. Let's all stand, give them a big round of applause. Super. Super. All right, thank you. Be seated. You know, you can't get any higher of accolades of praise than for somebody to say they've been faithful all these years. There's no higher praise that a person can give to another to say they've been in their place, they've done a great service for God. We're going to pray one more time. And uh, then I'll come back and read the scriptures right before I preach. And this will be the majesty praise that will come as I pray. And they'll sing right before the message. Father, I pray uh, that you would uh, be with these young people as they come to sing. Pray that you would take and use them. Prepare our hearts. Father, for the message to come, speak to our hearts. Show us the truth tonight that can help us to be better Christians, be more like Christ. Uh, Father, that's what we desire. Thank you for a good day, the many people saved, baptized, the lives changed, a time to be able to honor our veterans, be able to give reward and honor to whom it is justly due. Thank you for that. It's been a great day. I'll speak to our hearts again one more time. We'll thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Three Hebrew boys were thrown into the fire Because before the king they would not bow But they said, listen king, let it be known We serve a living God, we're not alone I know that God can do it, to him there's nothing to it I know he'll see it through Victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is a rock of ages. I know that he is able, mighty is he. They marched around the walls of Jericho. They knew that they would fall, God told them so. Just like he works for them, he's working now. Our God will never change, He has great power. I know that God can do it, to Him there's nothing to it. I know He'll see through it, sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, He is the rock of ages. I know that He is able, mighty is He. I know that God can do it to him, there's nothing to it. I know he'll see through his sweet victory. Well, even when storms are raging, he is the rock of ages. I know that he is able, mighty is he. 
I know that he's able, mighty is he. All right, very, very good. Now take your Bible, please, if you will, and let's go to uh, Psalm 85, look at verse 6. Psalm 85, verse 6. I announced this morning I'd preach a message tonight on God's formula for your personal revival. God's formula for your personal revival. We're in Psalm 85 and verse 6. Let's stand together for the reading of God's Word. I'm going to give you a little history study tonight, and then we'll, uh, of course, get into the message. But I want to give you a little history study about what took place leading up to this verse. But in order to do so, let's read the verse. The Bible says, Wilt thou revive us again, that thy people may rejoice in thee? And so here's the question. Wilt thou revive us again? Uh, he says this, so that thy people may rejoice in thee. So it's a question. Father, I pray that you'd bless as we do an inward inventory tonight about having a personal revival. May it be true in our hearts. May you show us a truth that can help us to be able to understand how that can be facilitated. And Lord, we we'll thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Be seated, if you will. Kind of stay with the history study a little bit, and you can see how this verse came into play, where God used it in history in, in our lives all throughout the day. 100 years before this verse was written, uh, Israel had a wicked king by the name of Manasseh. Manasseh uh, greatly influenced the people for wickedness. Uh, if you'll do a history study on Manasseh, you'll find out that there was no greater wicked king before him and no greater wicked king after him of such stature. You'll see that he was very godless. Uh, they uh, had the time, uh, they'd take the children cruelly and uh, be able to sacrifice them to pagan gods. You'll see that sin roamed freely throughout the cities and in the streets. Idolatry was practiced at its highest level during his kingship. Of course, then you see that God's people became addicted to idolatry. Seventy years before this verse was written, there was another that came by the name of Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar was the king of Babylon. Uh, he took his military forces and he went in and he took the people from their homeland. Remember, they are now idolaters. And so he took them from the homeland of idolatry and took them into Babylon. You'll see that Nebuchadnezzar took the wealthy and he took the, the middle class Jews into captivity. He took the wealthy because of their money. He took the middle class because of their work ethic, because they knew how to work. He left the poor there in the homeland of Palestine. Then 70 years rolls by. Now there's a remnant of Jews that's left there in the homeland of Palestine. You'll see that these are released, if you will, uh, some of them coming back to the old homeland. This is 70 years later. When they come back to the homeland, they see that it's lying in ruins. They see that the weeds are growing wildly. The thickets are very thick. Uh, the city that's been burned down now is still lying in rubbish. They see nothing but a rubbished, ruined land. The poor Jews that were left behind had uh, married, of course, the enemy of God, and now they were called Samaritans. You'll see that uh, these Jews began that return to get very discouraged. Why? Because they thought they would come back, and you know, once how you remember something, you think it's always going to be that way. It's just not that way. I remember when I had the privilege to go preach a soul winning banquet up in Maryland, where my roots are, and I decided to go back to that 180 acre farm where I have the precious memories of my childhood. And I remember that two story farmhouse being big, but somehow it shrank. 
I remember the beautiful hills, but somehow now they were grown over with weeds. I remember the three barns that we had, the two siloses that we had. Uh, we had three chicken coops, all of them gone. And I saw all the weeds that had gone and grown over the past 40 years. I was amazed. Can you imagine how these people felt coming back into the homeland after being gone for 70 years? They begin to get discouraged. They felt like quitting. They felt like throwing in the towel. They felt like walking off the scene. They felt like maybe it was just a little bit too much. But then God began to stir their hearts. They went through that time of apathy. They went through that time of having an apathetic attitude. They went through the time of formalism like the Pharisees and skepticism like the Sadducees. Then you'll see uh, that God begins to work in a miraculous way. Now comes, if you will please, the cry. The old prayer warrior raises his voice, calls on to God and says, God, wilt thou revive us again? And I think that needs to be the call, the cry of every individual Christian that sits under the pitch of my voice tonight, whether in the auditorium or watching us from another country. I think that you ought to cry out to God and take a personal inventory and say, wilt thou revive us again? Amen. Of course, we understand that God wants to do that. God has given us a, a formula, if you will, to follow. So if you go to 2 uh, Chronicles chapter 7, if you know your Bible, you knew I was going to wind up there sometime. 2 Chronicles chapter 7 and verse 14, and we're going to break that verse down tonight bit by bit. And we're going to see what we need to do to follow this formula for revival in a personal, intimate way. Let me give it to you tonight. I'm going to give you some statements as we roll. Here we'll see statement number one. Being one of God's children is a must. Being one of God's children is a must. Now, by the way, I want you to help me out tonight. I just want to know that you're there. You ready? I said being one of God's children is a must. Amen. That's what the Bible says. The Bible says in verse 14, the Bible says, if my people, uh, by the way, you have to be his people. You have to be uh, uh, vibed before you can ever be revived, okay? The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name. So you have to be stirred before you can be re-stirred. We understand tonight that you have to give God the allowance to be the one that's in charge of your life through that which is Jesus Christ and salvation before God can ever begin to work in you and through you to the ultimate purest capacity. So we understand this tonight, that being one of his children is a must. Now, I don't know about you tonight, but whenever I start to visit salvation over and over again, I, I just am so thankful that I'm saved. Amen. Now, I don't know about you tonight, but when I start to revisit salvation over and over again, I'm trying to help you tonight. I'm just so thankful that I am saved. Amen. And by the way, the Bible says, let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Amen. So you ought to be praising God every day of your life that you're saved. Amen. You ought to be thankful tonight that when you take your last breath here on, heaven, uh, on earth, your next breath will be in heaven. There is no soul sleep. There is no in between. There's heaven and there's hell, and you ought to rejoice tonight, you're not going to hell. And so here's what we understand tonight. In order for us to be able to have revival, uh, being one of his children is a must. Statement number two, you ready? Uh, being one who is humble is a must. Here's what the Bible says as we continue in that verse. The Bible says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves. Proverbs chapter 16 and verse 18, the Bible says, Pride goeth before destruction, and a haughty spirit before a fall. D.L. Moody said this, he said, If uh, one can touch humility, he's not. If one can touch humility, he's not. Humility is not seeing the faults in others as much as it is seeing the faults in yourself. It's easy to go around and say, I'll tell you what, uh, uh, you need to straighten that up and you need to straighten that up, but it's hard to look in the mirror and say, I need to work on this. Right. 
There's a spiritual that was sung years ago. It said, it's not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me, it's me, it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. And it goes on, uh, different verses of it. It's not my brother, it's not my sister, but it's me, O Lord, standing in the need of prayer. You know, sometimes I think what we need to do when it comes to preaching is draw a circle, stand in it, and say, here I am, God, speak to me. Speak to me. You know, it's easy to go over and uh, try to cast the moat out of somebody else's eye, a moat, a little piece of sawdust, uh, when we have the beam that's in our own eye. I think it's better for us to be able to do that self-inventory. Well, I don't believe that that person should be doing that. But what are you doing? What are you doing? How are things in your life? Are you walking with God? It's easy for you to pass judgment on someone else, but it would be better for you to pass judgment on yourself. Okay, so here's what we see. How is it that we can have a personal revival? Well, being one of his people is a must. Being one of his children, it's a must. Statement number next. Uh, Being one who is humble is a must. Uh, Humility. Uh, Somebody not walking around arrogant, proud, puffed up. Uh, Years ago, we taught our young people, and it stuck. I'm so glad it stuck. Years ago, when uh, I first became pastor, uh, young people would sing in the service, and you'd go up to them and say, man, you did a great job. And they would say, thank you, and they'd walk away. Here's what we said, don't do that. Why don't you say this? Praise the Lord. Because, listen to me, if it wasn't for the Lord, who would we be? If it wasn't for the Lord, where would we be? If it wasn't for the Lord, what would we be doing? If it wasn't for God's grace inside of each one of our lives, you wouldn't be here tonight. I wouldn't be here tonight. But because of the grace of God, we can thank God that he saved us. And we can thank God that you don't have to walk around saying, I've arrived. It's only by the grace of God that you have arrived at any level in your life. Here's what I'm seeing tonight. Formula for a personal revival. Being one of his uh, people is a must. Being one who is humble is a must. You ready? Being one who prays is a must here's what the bible says the bible says listen to it as we continue down that avenue of that particular verse if my people which are called by my name shall humble themselves watch it now and what and talk to me and pray pray. talk to me and Pray. pray talk to me and pray so god says it's important that you and i learn to pray 1 Thessalonians chapter 5 and verse 17, the Bible says to pray how often? He says, without ceasing, without ceasing. Don't be an emergency zone prayer. Go to the dentist, you hear the guy, no doubt, he's got a 14-pound drill, and you hear him working on the person in front of you. I got to pray now. Maybe you ought to pray before that. Go to the doctor, you find somebody weeping as they walk out of the doctor's office with their head down and they're saying, I'm just not gonna make it, I've got cancer, okay? Uh, But that doesn't mean that all of a sudden because they walk by you that you got cancer. But maybe you ought to pray before it hits you. Don't wait till your child rebels. I'm trying to help tonight. Don't wait till your child rebels to start praying for your child. Don't wait until you get in financial distress before you start praying for wisdom about your finances. Uh, Don't wait, if you will, until you lose your job to thank God for the job that you got. Don't wait, if you will, till your marriage gets in trouble before you start praying and trying to swim your way out of the mire. Don't do that. Uh, Spend time in prayer. Walk with them in the morning. Walk with them in the afternoon. Walk with them in the night hours and many times in between. So be somebody that prays. Uh, You've heard me say it often. My favorite verse is found in Jeremiah chapter 33 and verse 3. Started claiming it when I was in high school at 18 years of age. Became even more favorite of mine when I was in college. And it says, call upon me. Jeremiah is speaking it. Call upon me as he talks about the Lord. Call upon me. 
and I will answer thee and show thee great and mighty things which thou knowest not. Amen. Remember, when I was in college, uh, I, I, I remember it very vividly. I didn't have a, a car when I first went to college. My brother gave me his 12-speed bike. And I thought, this is great. So I had a 12-speed bike. And I remember him giving me that, and I worked at UPS. And I would ride that 12-speed bike down to UPS, and I would work. And I kept inviting people to church, and they would say, I want to come. I don't have a car. And I said, well, I can pick you up on my 12-speed bike. I was kidding. It wouldn't work anyway. But I said, yeah, let me see if I can get you a ride. And I kept trying and trying and trying and trying to get people to church. You know, just had difficulty getting people to church. And so uh, I said, dear God, if you'll give me a car, I I'll use it for your honor and for your glory. Within a couple of weeks, he gave me a car, paid for, gave it to me. I said, thank you, Lord. And so uh, you remember the story. For those of you who've been here a long time, you could tell my story. And so I drove it for a little while, and the motor blew up. Yeah. So I said, God, give me a car or the motor won't blow up. And he did. Soon after that, gave me a car. I drove it for a while, and the transmission went out. I said, God, I'm a college student. I can't afford a motor. You took care of that. You gave me a car. Now the transmission's going out on this car. So God, would you give me a car that the motor works? And the transmission works. He did. I had a car for a long time. And then uh, I was driving it home. It was a duster. Jacked up in the back. Orange stripes down the side. Blue paint. Duster. I remember driving that car. Uh, by then, uh, my wife, Mrs. Wells, and I, we were dating. I was excited. I got to go over her house. And uh, uh, they had a dating parlor in their house, a dating parlor. And so we would sit in the dating parlor as her sister would oftentimes join us. And I remember sitting there and us courting, just having a great time dating. I remember one time uh, uh, leaving her house or coming to her house, I don't remember what it was, but I was just excited. She lived on this road and I wanted to get there. I, it must have been going to her house, maybe not leaving, because I was definitely excited was never excited about leaving, but was excited about going. And I don't forget, I, I went to hit the brake pedal, and the brake pedal had propelled up underneath the steering column. That is not good. So I'm trying to hit that brake pedal, could not find the brake pedal, ran through a stop sign, ran into the side of somebody's car, just happened to be a Cadillac bounced off the Cadillac, went through a fence, and hit a tree. Now, can I tell you, that was not a good experience. But I didn't have any money. So I said, dear God, give me a car, the motor works, transmission works, and please, dear God, one that has brakes that work that I can find. And he gave me the ugliest car you ever saw in your life. It lasted us the rest of the college years uh, into our married life, and we drove it to New York City for our first ministry. Now, I want to say this. Be careful what you ask for. You might just get it. Right. You guys say, I'll tell you what, preacher, I'm praying for a wife. You might get what you asked for and then be sorry that you got it. <laughs> Maybe you ought to pray specifically specifically if you're praying for your children maybe you ought to pray they get saved at an early age pray specifically maybe you ought to pray that they keep a tender heart to God and always serve God pray specifically uh, pray if you would please uh, for your wife that is now your wife your husband that is now your husband uh, pray if you're older and you got grandkids hey pray for the one that your uh, son or your daughter married uh, pray for those grandkids uh, be somebody that just doesn't talk about prayer be somebody that practices prayer you got trouble in your life it's time to go to God but don't just go to God my dear friend when you got trouble in your life Go to God before your trouble arrives at your back door. 
I'm saying this, here is uh, the formula that God gives for personal revival. The Bible talks about being one of his children, being one of his people is a must. Being one who uh, is humble is a must. Being one who prays is a must. Years ago, there was Mr. Clary and Mr. Nash. I love reading the, uh, the stories about great men of God and how God used them. They used to travel with a fellow by the name of Charles Finney. Uh, Mr. Clary and Mr. Nash were businessmen. They paid their own way to travel with this preacher. And as they would get there, they would get there early. Uh, in that which is the recordings of what they did, they would try to find a way to get underneath the pulpit. And here's what they would do. As they would get underneath the pulpit, these two businessmen would begin to pray. Their theology was messed up, but their methodology was good. So they'd begin to pray and they'd say, Dear God, fill us with the power of the Holy Spirit. Because they said they believed this. If God was going to fill them with the power of the Holy Spirit, and they were under Mr. Finney, then God would have to go through Mr. Finney to get to them. So wrong theology, but a great methodology because at least they prayed. May I say this, that God's people ought to pray. I prayed for five years for mom to get saved and she got saved. I prayed for seven years for my dad to get saved and he got saved. E.J. Daniels, a, a great preacher of years ago, he was visiting over in the Korea, South Korea area. He left Seoul, Korea, uh, getting ready to go preach at another church. When he arrived at the church, and, and uh, they claimed at that time that 80% of the people were ready to fight at any given time. I don't think it's that way today. But during those days, it was tense between North and South Korea. He was preaching in South Korea, and he always uh, came to church 15 minutes before he would preach, never 30 minutes, never 25, never 20, always 15. And he came into the church auditorium getting ready to set up some literature in the back of the auditorium, and he heard somebody crying, somebody speaking out loud, audibly. Sound like they were begging. So he decided, huge auditorium that said about 1,000, and so he started to walk towards the front of the auditorium where the altar was, and he notices, according to his own notes, that people were spread out all over the altar 15 minutes before church service, and they were praying. He went up to the interpreter, and he says, tell me what they're saying. And as they were crying around the altar, they were saying this, please, God, revive America, because if America is not revived, we have no hope. Can you imagine them praying for your kids back then more than you pray for your own kids? Can you imagine the countries of the world that look at America and say, if America ever loses hope, we have no hope. If America ever loses God's grace, we have no God's grace. May I say tonight that we need to be a people that pray. Statement number next. The Bible says, and seek my face. And so I said, statement number one, being one of his people is a must. Statement number two, being somebody that's humble is a must. Statement number three, being one who prays is a must. Statement number four, being one who seeks the face of God is a must. The Bible says in verse 14, and seek my face. Listen to it, Isaiah chapter 55 and verse 6. The Bible says, uh, seek ye the Lord while he may be found. That lets you know that maybe there's a day he might not be found. Seek ye the Lord while he may be found. Call upon him while he is near. And so what should we do? We ought to earnestly seek the Lord. Dr. Ralph Sexton uh, Jr. used to travel, and he was known as a great camp meeting preacher in the North Carolina area. When Dr. Sexton would come to town, everybody would come out to try and hear him as he would preach these great tent revivals. He said this was back in the day when every preacher would bring their own exhorter. The exhorter were guys that wore their best overalls. They wore a tie and their best overalls. Did you wear overalls, Brother Craig, this year? Okay, if you remember how he dressed on the old-fashioned Sunday, that's how they would have looked. They had the, the overalls on, they had a tie on. And he said, back in those days, he said, each preacher would bring their exhorters with them. 
So what they would do when their preacher would get up to preach, they'd start hollering, amen. They'd start hollering, hallelujah. They'd start hollering like this, go sick them, preacher. They would holler, preach the word. They would holler, keep your eyes on the master. They would holler. And they'd bring these old family Bibles, you know, the big ones. And they'd bring them and they'd have their big uh, uh, best overhauls on. And as people were praying at the altar, they'd come up and they'd walk back and forth with their big Bibles. And they'd say, oh God, let him die, God, let him die. And let him live on to you, God. Oh God, God, I pray that you'd uh, uh, touch him, God, help him, God. Work in his heart, God. Change his life, God. Do that, God. You can do it, God. And they walked back and forth, back and forth, just chanting these things as they were praying. Now, they earnestly believe that that's what they were doing. They were praying. Oh, dear God, may I say this? May I say that you need to be somebody and I need to be somebody that seek him early. Right. Seek him early. Be able to, uh, if you will, look inwardly and allow God to work. Number next, I'm almost done. Statement number next, uh, being one who turns from their wicked ways is a must. Right. Turn from their wicked ways. You say, what is that? Well, I don't know. Might be cheating. Might be lying. Wicked ways. Might be stealing. I was in a 7-Eleven. I watched a teenage boy reach over and get some candy, put it in his pocket. I said, what are you doing? He oh, nothing, nothing. I said, well, while you're doing nothing, put the candy back. He said, what candy, man? I said, the candy that you put in your right pocket. Go ahead and put that back. He said, hey, hey, dude. He said, that's none of your business. I said, hey, dude, I just made it my business. Put the candy back. And he said, uh, hey, chill. Chill, dude. I've never been called dude so many times in my life. <laughs> he said, chill, dude. Just chill. Don't let it get under your skin, man. At least he recognized I was a, a man. I said, just go ahead and put it back. He said, you going to make an issue of this? I said, no. Not if you put it back. He said, oh. He walked away. Store manager came up and said, thank you. By the way, you know, you being honest, you being somebody that loves God, you being somebody, if you would, that just decides that you... And, and that, by the way, that's a fun story to tell, right? Is that fun? You say, oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I remember, I'm going to tell a story on you. Dr. Bachman was down at a gas station. What, what are you talking about? He went down there minding his own business. Then he saw a guy, I think it, if I remember the story correctly, if not, you can correct me. Saw a guy beating up on a gal or whatever. So he decided to walk over and say, don't do that. So the guy turned on him. So him being the mild manner, big S underneath the shirt, <laughs> decided, okay, all right. And, and so he just kind of took care of it. Walked away, seemed like everything was calm, cool, and collective. And all of a sudden, police officer shows up, lady, and the guy turned on her started to beat her up. So all of a sudden, the S got bigger. <laughs> so he goes walking over, takes care of the situation, and she said, thank you. I think that maybe one day, uh, he'll become like the police chaplain of the state of Texas. <laughs> but it's, it's fun to talk about stuff like that. It is. And I thank God for you. But what about the wickedness that's in our own hearts? Right. By the way, what do you look at on your phone? Right. What websites do you visit? Right. 
What notes do you write? What music do you listen to? What games do you play that's wicked? How is it that you think of others that don't treat you the way that you think you deserve to be treated? Right. Can I help you out a little bit? If we got what we deserve tonight, we'd be burning in hell. Anything above hell is a blessing. May I say this tonight? If we want personal revival, we must be uh, his people. That's a must. Amen. We must be humble. We must be people that pray. We must be people that seek the face of God. We must be people that turn from our wicked ways. Amen. Then we need to be people, and, and listen to me tonight, and, and I'm done. We need to be people that not just turn from our wicked ways, but always be willing to hear him. Always continually be willing to obey him. Always be willing, you listen to me tonight, be willing to submit to him. You say, well, it, it sounds terrible, pastor. What can I do? Well, 1 John chapter 1, verse 9 says this, if, that's a condition. He says, if, that means it's up to you. If we confess our sins, that's plural, he's faithful and just to forgive us of our sins and cleanse us from all unrighteousness. God says as long as we hide iniquity in our heart, the Lord will not hear us. Had a friend of mine years ago, I said, so how do you keep your sin list so short? He said, every time God points it out to me, what do I do? I simply right then, I just stop and say, God, you pointed this out to me right now. I ask you to forgive me. Please forgive me. He'd be walking in a mall. He'd stop. God, you showed me this. I need to ask your forgiveness. He said, preacher, he said, some people would call me nuts because they didn't know who I was talking to. By the way, this is back before cell phones. Some people would call me nuts because they didn't know who I was talking to. It didn't matter to me because I want to be right with him. Amen. Maul Sunday said, Billy Sunday confuses me. Billy confuses me because one minute he'll be talking to me. The next minute, he's talking to God, and I can't figure out when he changed the conversation. There's a closeness there. There's a closeness there. Somebody went to Dr. Rice many years ago when he was living and said, how do you keep a short sin list? He said, every night before I go to bed, I, I get a three-by-five card. I'll pull it out, and I'll write down, say, Holy Spirit, show me what sins I have committed against you. I'd write them down. There's the sin. Holy Spirit, is there any more? Write it down. Holy Spirit, is there any more? Write it down. God, would you show me? Would you show me? Is there any more? I'd write it down. That's what I said. And he said, get on my knees. And I'd pray. And I'd earnestly say, God, please forgive me. Then he said, I'd take that three by five card. I'd tear it up. Because my sin is between me and none other. So I tear it up, I put it down the commode, and I flush it. Now, if you got a lot of sense, you'll probably have to call the plumber. <laughs> but can I say this? It's good to keep a good sin list that is short. Now, I don't know about you tonight, but it would be good to take an inventory tonight. It'd be good to take an inventory. Where do you stand between you and your God? Where do you stand? Can God work freely in you? You ready? You ready? Can God work freely through you? If he can't work freely in you, he'll never be able to work freely through you. But you've got to give God yourself. What about singing that song, yourself? It's not my father, not my mother, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's not my brother, not my sister, but it's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. It's me. It's me. It's me, O oh Lord, standing in the need of prayer. God wants to do that in your life. Father, we love you tonight. We thank you for church. Thank you for the dear people that's here. God, I pray tonight that you'd help us to be people that seek to have a personal revival. 
God, we've seen in the Bible what we need to do, what we need to understand to have a personal revival in our lives. And may it be so tonight that we take a personal inventory, maybe around an altar, maybe to a pew, and then come to an altar and ask you to help. Ask you, Father, to cleanse us deeply within so we can be closer to you than ever before. And dear Father, we thank you for it. In Jesus' name, amen. Heads are bowed, eyes are closed. You're here tonight, my dear friend, and you say, Preacher, please pray for me. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. Please pray for me. I don't know for sure if I died, I'd go to heaven. I'd like to know it for sure. I am not sure. Please pray for me. If that's you, would you raise your hand? Just put it up, put it down. Many people receiving Christ this morning, thank God for it. What about you? Do you know you'll go to heaven? Uh, let's do it. You want to? Uh, let's take, if you would please, a testimony. Say, preacher, I know I'm saved. Without a doubt, I know I'm saved. I know I'm going to go to heaven. Not ashamed of that. If you know that you're saved tonight, not ashamed of it, would you raise your hand to testify? Wow. Many, many hundred. God bless you. Thank you. That's good. Preacher, God spoke to my heart tonight. I want to do a personal inventory. Please pray for me. I need to do a personal inventory. Make sure I'm right with God the way I should be. Please pray for me. Here's my hand. Would you raise yours? Would you do it? My, my. Thank you. Let's all stand, please. Heads are bowed. Eyes are closed. Father, we thank you for tonight. Please help us to come to an altar. Make decisions that we need to make in order to be closer to you. We'll thank you for that too. In Jesus' name, amen. As they begin to play tonight, maybe you yourself would like to visit an altar tonight and say, God, please help me to be able to become a person of faith, be able to become a person that walks with you, be able to become a person that submits to you. God, would you just help me tonight to do that personal inventory so that I can be a better Christian. What about you, friend? What about you? People still coming. What about you? Would you let God work in you? You have to let God work in you before you can let God work through you. Would you let God work in you? What about you? It's easy to point to someone else and say, I wish they'd get their game right. But maybe you need to point at yourself and say, God, show me if I need to get my game right. What about you? What about you? People praying, take your time. No rush. People praying, take your time. No rush. Thank you. Be seated for just a moment, if you will. Uh, don't forget to visit the bookstore. This is called Heart Language. This is by Randy Dignan. Of course, he was one of our youth conference speakers, uh, born into a deaf family, learned sign language early, and was able to now be used of God to reach many people through sign language. Then this is uh, Why God Used Dale Moody. Uh, uh, Gear, uh, Caleb Garway put this out. Really good book, of course, originally written. This is a rewrite forward, of course, by Garraway, uh, by R.A. Torrey. And so R.A. Torrey traveled with Dale Moody. It's been around for years. It's a good read. And so I hope, I, I was preaching in Florida, and one, a pastor's wife that my wife and I have known for many, many years came up to me, and she said, uh, Brother Wells, I, I heard that you're praying about doing some stuff in Northfield, uh, where Moody's uh, residence is and uh, trying to get some of the northeastern pastors to come and be a part of that conference and i said yes and she said so i've got a couple of gifts for you and one of the gifts she gave me uh, was the life story 
of D.L. Moody. I've never seen it before. I've got many books on Moody, but are very thick, and it's a pictorial. A pictorial. Shows all the pictures from when he was a kid all the way up. Very valuable book. And I said, you sure you want me to have that? She said, yeah, I want you to have that. And so uh, she's a pastor's wife for, oh my, I don't know how many years. She's in her 80s now, and, uh, but just a very precious lady, and uh, I appreciate her so very much. But uh, that, uh, when you read uh, books like this, uh, books about missionaries that God used, books about people that reared their family the best they could with Bible principles, can I tell you, it's worth its weight in gold. It's worth its weight in gold to be able to get good knowledge there. They're down in the bookstore. Hope you avail yourself to be able to go down there. You heard some of the announcements. I hope you'll go by a guest services and be able to sign up for various things, uh, pick up different brochures that are there. Any other uh, announcements that we have right tonight? Deacons, don't forget, we do have that meeting tonight about the other Bible college that we are adopting. And so you pray with us about that. And uh, that is fantastic. Then pray, of course, with the international uh, Baptist colleges that we have, Lone Star Baptist College International, now in 10 countries, uh, 10 different countries that, uh, of course, we are sponsoring in partnership. And uh, my, 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 what a blessing it is to be able to take the Bible to the land beyond and be able to train soul winners and uh, uh, those that be full-time Christian service. Please don't forget, Wednesday night, 7 o'clock, come. You'll be able to choose what class you want to go to, as we have advertised several times over. And we hope that you avail yourself to take advantage of that great, great lessons. And so you come, be a part of that and that is fantastic. Let's all stand, if you will. God bless you. A great listeners tonight, great ameners tonight, great response. Sure do love you. Keep it up. We'll sing our way out. We'll sing the chorus. I am so glad I'm a part of the family of God.